Matt Franco does a steady business selling wine in a trendy New York neighborhood. He specializes in brands produced in small amounts and from unusual places. The expensive rare wines keep him in business, but lately both he and his customers have been more careful about what they buy. And when it comes to sourcing vintage wines, you have to be as demanding as you possibly can. And if something, one little detail doesn't line up, you really need to just pass because nowadays it's way too dangerous and <clears throat> it's way too easy for these people to, to operate. He blames his caution on a $20 million scam. Rudy Kurniawan has been convicted of selling fake wine. He convinced experienced collectors that the cheap stuff he bottled in his kitchen was rare. Experts say spotting a fake can be tricky. You use the beam to examine it to well, it's still inside the bottle, and you can see you can see the crystals of the, the tartrates in the wine that are adhering to the cork. So you know that cork has been in there for a long time. Sometimes Charles Curtis is the former head of wine for Christie's Auction House. He examines all aspects of the bottle and its labeling to make sure the private clients he now advises are getting what they pay for, even cutting the capsule to look at the cork. The key is to know who you're doing business with, and if you stick to uh, trustworthy vendors, then you'll very seldom have a problem. And yeah. the, the a rule of thumb is always, a, as it is for anything, if it seems too good to be true, then it's probably too good to be true. Yeah. Kurniawan, who's an Indonesian citizen, is the first person convicted in an American court for faking rare vintages. But with the United States now the largest market for wine in the world, he may not be the last. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, New York.